Welcome to the video today. We're going to take a look at Divisimate and how it's functioning now at 1.3. We're going to look at the new universal orchestral uh, presets that are available for free download for anybody who owns the program. And we're going to look at how this functions, why color and harmony are so important to every instrument in your orchestra, how it can just add so much nuance and interest to your tracks really quite important to understand how this works and also I'd like to thank uh, the new Patreons this week uh, thank uh, the people that have uh, said they're going to support the idea of experimenting and pushing the envelope for new ideas for sketching songs and music so all you Patreons you're really appreciated so now let's dive in. Uh, we're going to listen to a small example and look at how the mechanics of this works. All right, so let's look at one of the presets. We have a simple preset of horns and the strings, and it's on uh, performance page five. And there it is. So um, all it's doing is sending three notes to strings and horns. Uh, each note you play will be sent to different instruments and some of these instruments can be transposed against other instruments. And um, before we get into any more of the mechanics, uh, let's just hear what this particular preset sounds like when played um, in a small little idea, musical idea, using retrospective record inside of Cubase. So it's a really um, effective way of uh, using um, colors and you're, what you're doing is you're taking the different registers of the instruments that, um, you know, just pure orchestration is when you have different instruments playing in certain registers and they sound different together. So if you have an oboe playing with a flute, um, it will sound one way, but it will sound different when you're playing. If you're playing in a high range for the flute and a low range with the oboe, you get a certain sound. If you're playing both instruments in a high uh, register, you get another sound. So orchestration is all about how you're using the instruments and how they're playing together and how you can change the registers of every instrument and the harmonies they create as they mix together to create a beautiful orchestration. So what, in essence, Divisimate allows you to do is pre-set up all of that to 32 channels before it hits your DAW, which is a really interesting and powerful way to work. And considering how many different colors you can get with just 32 channels of instruments, let alone once you start to break down every note and where that note goes to what instrument and having the instruments transposed in register against others in different uh, harmonic ways and you can do that inside certain scales um, you can see how you could create endless amounts of color and um, you can create such interest with every track so Again, let's uh, break this down and uh, begin to play some more examples and more of these beautiful uh, presets. So today I'm using the Divisimate Longs folder and I have three different Divisimate folders, one with the long shorts and one with extended libraries. And it allows me to uh, create different passages with different uh, articulations when they're needed. So if I open up the folder for the longs, we can see that we have all the standard orchestral instruments 
set up. And uh, when you buy Divisimate, they give you different templates for different DAWs. So you can set this up quite easily. You just have to match every track with your preferred uh, flutes and piccolos and different instruments. And in this case, all of these instruments have long articulations like legatos, sustains, and it's good for that type of uh, music or that type of tracks that you want to create. When I want to use Divisimate with shorter articulations, I have the same thing. I just copied and pasted into another folder. And then I changed every articulation for these same instruments. So the instruments are all the same. They're all color coded the same and they're on the same channels. The only thing I changed was the articulation for every instrument. In this case, like staccatos and uh, maybe short detache and that type of thing. And you can do the same thing if you open another folder, copy and paste, and then you can change and add some interesting uh, elements on top of this. Because even though you have 32 channels that Divisimate will send to, you can say that your violin's channel can go to this violin in my extended library. So in this case, my intimate uh, emotional violin is on Divisimate port 28 and it's the same in my shorts and in my longs. So if we look at my longs um, over here, we also see that's on port 28. So all the violin ones go to port 28. So what I'm saying is that you don't have to just have one violin. Um, you could have three or four different violins set up on port 28 and you can activate them or on and off as you need them. So if one day you want to, like I say, use shorts, you can just turn this folder off and turn on the short, the, uh, short articulation folder. Or you can add some very maybe expressive vibrato, uh, progressive vibrato uh, violins, right? And that's what I'm doing here with my extended. So I'm basically just adding some more colorful violins on top of my regular long violins here. And they're all on the same channel, so I don't really need more than 32. And also I should mention that I have two other tracks that are controlling this Divisimate session. I want to have Scalar control my scales, so I created a Scalar track. And uh, that track, uh, that's the track that receives the input on my keyboard. So that would be your input for whatever your keyboard controller is. And um, so this scaler, which today I've got to set up for F minor scale, um, that allows me to control the scale here in this scaler track, send it to loopback, and loopback is just a channel, a MIDI channel you create and call it loopback. And uh, that channel receives scalar. So my loopback channel input is scalar here, as you see. And its output uh, routing is Divisimate loopback. So, and that, that option becomes available when you install uh, Divisimate. So Divisimate allows you to have a loopback channel and uh, that loopback channel allows it to be controlled by any um, products such as Scalar or any other product like that. So that's the way I'm getting control over my scales as I play live into the keyboard. It goes to loopback and that goes to Divisimate. So and these are all been talked about in other uh, videos, the mechanics of how this works. But it is fairly basic to understand once you really understand how inputs and outputs work for channels. It's the same thing with my re Remiti controllers. And if you think about it, if you want a, a more broader look at how this all works to make it clearer, these controller um, products such as uh, I don't know if calling Divisimate as a controller, but it's the way I see it in my mind. Where instead of just playing live on your keyboard, which goes to your DAW, which plays an instrument, you're allowing uh, programs, which I call controllers, 
to be um, sandwiched in between that give uh, your notes that you're playing on your keyboard so much more interest in life. In the case of Divisimate, it allows your playing to be split up into separate notes and that those notes can be harmonized in different ways to different instruments. In the case of our, my RTS system, it, the controller in that case is Remedy and that Remedy controller is taking and again the notes that I input live on my keyboard is adding all kinds of MIDI notes and um, patterns for every instrument and then it goes to my instruments. So these, the idea of having controllers in between you and your instruments is a very powerful concept and I think it's one that is just beginning to be understood and utilized and in the future I think that uh, there's tremendous potential there. So once you've set up a loopback track and your scalar track you're ready to go and now let's go back to those wonderful presets and talk about that some more. So we're back now to the original preset we started out with and it's important to note a few things. These presets were created and handcrafted for a certain sound and harmonies. And the moment you start to change them, if you don't know what you're doing, more than likely you'll change it for in a bad way. But once you uh, learn and grow, as I'm trying to do, um, you can start to see how the mechanics work and what to add, what instruments to add. Uh, do you want to transpose it? Do you want to add some more notes to your um, presets so that you could play bigger chords at a time or some lead notes? But before you do all that, just understand that these were done and crafted in a very particular way. And I would uh, recommend that you learn the presets the way they are and you play them according to the rules they're set up. And you'll see the beauty that went into crafting these presets. And once you've done that, then you can mess around or you can save copies and change things around. But So let's play this using only three notes. So the most we can play are three notes on the keyboard at a time. But you'll see that that is more than enough to get some beautiful uh, colors here. So... We play a little higher up on the register. Now, of course, horns have a register where they'd like to be heard, and you have different colors of your horns just depending on where they're played on your keyboard. And you have different colors and sounds you get from your uh, strings uh, depending on what registers you're playing at. So this preset is basically saying that a gifted orchestrator knows what instrument sounds best at what register on the keyboard against and with other instruments and where they sound best on the register. And they have put it together in a way that uh, sounds beautiful, basically. And if they need one of these instruments to be in a different register, they can just use a transposer. And in this case, they transpose horns uh, four down to give you a lower horn. And in these cases here, uh, they've transposed up. And so you can just see how they put this together. Now, I should also mention that since we are playing um, this preset with scalar filtering it in a certain scale of F minor, if you wanted to change this to maybe uh, not a full octave up, but maybe um, seven up or a fifth up instead, and you wanted it to, to lock to the F minor, you could definitely do that. Um, now, you have to, it's really important to know what you're doing at this point, and I'm just learning all this as I'm going, but I'm finding that it, it is so interesting in the different flavors, and again, I'll say the word colors that you can get when you start to uh, match different instruments in different registers, in different harmonies, 
together, that's where you really start to, uh, your composing goes from just simple triads and chord progressions to uh, just explosion of different um, colors and varieties of interests you can get on your tracks when you start to harmonize all this. So let's just go back because I don't want to ruin this, uh, but I'm saying that you can harmonize um, inside the scale that you've chosen. You just have to turn this button on and set your harmonies here and uh, that will keep everything uh, together. But in this case, um, we want to just start back with the original. So let's just make sure that it's a double click on this to reset everything. And having explained some of that, um, we can just explore this one preset a little bit more and then we'll go on to another one. See, in that case, I naturally went to four notes at a time because that's just, I like to do chords on my left hand and do some lead notes on my right. But again, it's very important to play these presets the way they were made and that's where they will really shine. You see how beautiful that is? And that's just using three notes. So yeah, in my opinion, um, you know, you wouldn't, your normal chord progressions wouldn't sound that great unless you really knew what you were doing. But in this case, um, even though I have limited, um, you know, concepts of orchestration, um, Scalar is helping me to keep in a general scale and Divisimate is, with these presets, helping me to, uh, because an orchestrator has set up these presets, is saying that, okay, these instruments sound good together with these harmonies in these ranges. And that's all set up for you in these presets. So it takes your knowledge of playing, your limited knowledge, and it gives you the benefit of somebody, an orchestrator, who has put these presets together. And that's really great. So let's move on to another one. So some of these presets are very simple, but they're orchestrated in a way that uh, makes sense. So here we have three different instruments, bassoon one, bassoon two, contra bassoon. They're stacked and they're all playing just on one note here. And uh, if we play it, it's a very simple sound, uh, not exciting. But what's interesting uh, to know is that these were created by an orchestrator who knows what he's doing because the contra bassoon sound by itself is very low and kind of nasal and to add some bassoons to it uh, at the same register would just add more of that nasal kind of sound and that's not what they want. An orchestrator wants to use the best of every instrument at the right time in the right register to blend them together. So what has been done in this simple preset is um, the um, bassoon number one, if we look at it, the transposer is transposed up two octaves. So he's capturing just the very beautiful high end of bassoon one. And on the second one, he's got it transposed up one, one octave. And so he's adding the very nice and light side of the bassoons with the contra bassoon, which together gives you a nicer blend of that kind of lower woodwind that in this case you might want but it's done by an orchestrator who knows what they're doing so also i should mention that um, any of these ideas and some of the even the really complex ideas can be easily captured and because we have um, a scalar track set up and a loopback track set up just simply just go to your scalar track clear out any previous loopback um, retrospective recording and i got that set up to the, my hotkey so i've cleared out my retrospective buffer and um, but regardless even even if you don't clear it out it keeps repeating itself so anytime you want to capture one of these ideas just go back to the, your scalar track so if i'm 
if I was to just play some notes and I don't have to activate recording in any way, I'm just on my keyboard trying all kinds of ideas. And when I hit a few notes that I like, say, you know, to just that simple little uh, four notes there, I can come back and just go to the scalar track because that's where the notes are being recorded for retrospective. And I can just say insert at my cursor, wherever that may be, and I have that captured. Now, why that's important is, uh, well, first of all, because you can play it back anytime. So you can play back that performance anytime, but you can also then use this track here to uh, record that and get uh, it recorded on the correct instrument so that you get every MIDI note on every instrument track. And it's very simple to do that also. Just go back to the beginning. Just enable or select any track. So if you have a bunch of instruments, you may not want to go through and activate this one, activate that one, and this one. Just select them all and uh, simply press your uh, record button and it will do its uh, trick of recording everything on its track but only the ones that have MIDI data will actually record and so you've instantly captured that idea and then you've captured it again in high detail on every track for every instrument by itself so now you have MIDI for every note on every instrument so I wanted to point out that um, you may have some very complex uh, performances if we get into let's go to the final page here into some of the big performances dramatic 2t so if we load that up you can see that we have a very complex um, preset here but that can all be captured and you can play any type of uh, idea you have so And that idea that you just played um, can be, like I say, you can just go back to Scalar. We can get rid of this one, delete that. And the buffer is now filled with a new one. So we can put that at the cursor. So that performance I just played, and we'll get rid of these, is now captured. So I just reset it here. And move it up. So, yeah, very easy to record even the most complex of these Divisimate presets. So here's another example of a preset, and it's using the same um, instruments, and I wanted to point this out. So these three same instruments, again, the bassoon one, two, and the contra bassoon, are orchestrated in a slightly different way. Now we have the first bassoon is just up by one octave, and but we have three notes that can play these so you can play a chord but it just demonstrates that um, that same idea now we will hear a completely different uh, concept or different look at uh, the same three instruments and you can see how lovely they stack together with just a little bit of orchestration where one is up by one uh, transposed by one octave So, in essence, um, a lot of these presets are made to be stacked and played on one track with another. So, if, if I'm creating the song and I have other tracks already made and now I want to introduce some uh, woodwinds, some maybe lower woodwinds bassoon type idea, this is already pre-orchestrated so that I could activate a track and start playing some beautiful... bassoon ideas on a track which is already uh, pre-orchestrated. Now in this example, again we have bassoons, but we're introducing some clarinets. We have clarinet 1, 2 and bassoon 1 and 2. 
And they're orchestrated in another slightly different way where we have four different notes that can be played on the keyboard at once. So we can have a chord with my left hand and I can play some lead notes on uh, my right hand, which will more than likely be picked up uh, with the clarinet one. See how beautiful that is? It's just uh, a very nicely orchestrated because they picked the right instruments and uh, they've kind of stacked them in the right way and so that you can play chords and a lead instrument. So here we have a more elaborate woodwind uh, setup and we can just play and try to get some ideas. So we have four notes we can play with, so we can do some chord and a lead and... We try different registers since there's higher uh, type of instruments, piccolo. So they're kind of set up to give you a nice range of woodwind ideas there. If we were to change the, uh, if I go into the da, and change it to a more upbeat, uh, let's say A major. So let's now let's see what how that changes uh, the mood of this preset. And immediately you see it's upbeat. It's it just changes. So, yeah, you can just um, try so many different scales and so many different presets. Let's try another one. So for this preset, it's very simple. There's no transposing of instruments. It's simply divisi, but um, it, it shows the beauty of when you simply divide up the uh, notes across the strings, it becomes so much more realistic and musical. Let's try that again. So yeah, after a couple uh, goof ups, you can, you know, you'll get into the little groove of this preset and come up with something nice. And I uh, used um, the retrospective just to record. And let's just play that. And that's just straight divisi. This preset has some, a little bit of brass and some strings. It's very nice to play with uh, a chord.
Vamos ser na, na isso, né? Yeah, it took a while to figure that out, but I just caught a nice little idea there. But as you play this particular preset with chords, you can find all kinds of different colors and ways to go, and um, it's just so much fun to explore. So this is the last preset. It's set up for a lot of instruments and uh, some timpani. So I've just been kind of goofing around with this. But... didn't work out too good but it depends a lot on the velocity so you can uh, get a lot of different shades of uh, interest here no, that didn't work So a lot more to practice, but I think you're starting to get a good idea of what's possible with um, these presets. They just set a very nice stage, but it's up to you to um, really play by the rules. And um, when you're ready, um, you can expand and make your own presets and you can create all kinds of interesting uh, colorations between any kind of instrument you can imagine and you can transpose and you can transpose inside the scale of your choosing you can add some repeaters and you can activate melody lines where um, your lead instrument will only play in a certain area that you set up here and you can drag that to make your melody lead uh, zone where you want you can change how the notes are interpreted by the system you can set up low zones also, and you can do a whole lot more. I, I know I haven't done justice to the system today, but it's to show people that may be on the edge of wondering, should I pick it up? It's on sale uh, this week, I think to the 2nd of December. And um, I would say if you're serious about orchestration and you want to go to the next level beyond just a simple chord progression, uh, harmonies are you know something you really have to look at and orchestration where you're um, transposing different instruments and playing them off against each other to uh, basically form new instruments and then um, you know that all leads to that the full orchestration so it's a great way to learn the presets are set up so that you can get some instant gratification it will lead you to a better place as far as um, your own productions. And it's on sale. I would have to say this is a buy if you're interested in those things. 
I hope you're able to make music wherever you're at in the world today, and we'll see you on the next video.